It's now on WordPress. You're going to have an app installed that automatically sends out a tweet to followers. Over here on Foursquare, when people check into your dealership on Foursquare, it's going to send out a tweet. It's also going to appear on a right rail app on your WordPress site, so on and so forth. Okay, again, for time constraints, I don't want to spend too much time on this. This is the future. This is automotive digital marketing of the future. So what does that look like? Let's get down one more level of granularity. This is actually a paper form. I use this in dealerships. We come up with an article topic, and then we assign who's going to post it where. And then we follow up to make sure it gets posted. So again, create something like this in your dealership. When the dealership does something, you're supporting a local charity, you're sponsoring the Little League team, you got your hockey team that you sponsored just made it to the state championships. If you're Sean Stapleton, your son just took the wrestling championship of the world, or Minnesota, or whatever it is, you're going to write an article about it. And you're going to get these articles distributed. Just remember, if it's worth writing about, it's worth putting links in. Make sure all your content creates backlinks to where it's easy for customers to do business with your dealership. So next, how about Facebook advertising? I'm not talking about a Facebook page. Let me ask you something. How many of you have less than 1,000 fans, 1,000 likes on your dealership's Facebook page? Anybody here with less than 1,000? Do you spend any time putting content on that Facebook page? Why? And you're, 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 it's like, it'd be like me doing this presentation to an empty room. Okay, you got to get, it's a combination. You need the content for people to like it. But have you ever tried finding something on Facebook? Have you ever tried finding a dealership's Facebook page? It's hard. It's not Google, people. Facebook, do you know why they give those pages away for free? Have you ever seen in the movies where the crack dealer is over by the playground? Hey, try some crack. Facebook pages are crack. <laughs> they get you hooked. What do you have to do to get fans? You want to hear the dirty little secret about Facebook? And I love those guys. I spend a lot of time in Palo Alto at Facebook headquarters. I have a blast with them. I talk with them every day. Kristen Matthews, is Kristen in the room? She said she was going to be here. She works for me. She talks to Facebook every day. What is the secret to Facebook pages? Shooting your own ads and like yourself. Do you know why you get the Facebook pages for free? Think about it. Do you think Facebook makes any money off of free pages? Yeah. Come on, people. You have to buy advertising. They don't tell you this, but you, the, is the crack free forever? Neither are, is Facebook. It's not free. It is an advertising medium. So let's take a look at how it works. Here's the instructions. Here's a campaign we ran in Facebook. Now, before anybody gets intimidated by the numbers, this is for a store in the New York metro market. So there's a lot of things you can do in a big metro. Just, hey, knock it down, move the decimal point over one. The ratios should stay the same. The ad was seen over 7 million times. 1,730 members clicked on the display ads and also fanned the page. About $1,600 was our total cost. Cost us 92 cents per thousand. Anybody here track your CPM costs and other forms of advertising? Right now, Facebook advertising is more cost effective than Google search. More cost effective than Google search. Yes, sir. Real quick question about that. Yes. I've seen when we have done Facebook advertising, uh -huh. the time on site and the bounce, the time on site is really low and the bounce rate is really high. Okay. Every time I jump in, and Yep. You know what? You know what? I got to tell you, I've learned the same thing. You never do a Facebook ad that point, points to your dealership website. Don't do it. It's a waste of money. You point the ad to your Facebook page, and you have content on your page that then encourages the customer, like service coupons. Facebook, I'll tell you the most successful Facebook advertising that I've done lately has been tires. Buy three, get the fourth tire for free. Unbelievable. We sold 250 sets of tires in March through one dealership through Facebook. We spent about $2,000. So I don't know if that pencils. I don't know if there's any fixed ops guys here. I'm not sure if it's worth $2,000 to sell 250 sets of tires, but the dealers seemed happy about it. Um, to, buddy, to your point, you're right. If you send them outside of Facebook, it's a guaranteed bounce. You got to keep them inside of Facebook until you're, again, it's the, it's the crack method. Get them to your page. Get them to like you. Make them think you care. 
All right? And then they, then they come to your website. <laughs> Reputation management, moving on. This right here, for everybody in this room, for the next couple of years, this is going to put more customers into your showroom or remove them from your showroom than anything else going on at this conference. Reputation management, I don't like it that it's so important, but it is. I don't like it when the customer says I won't pay over $300 a month, but we got to deal with it, right? Reputation management is there. It's not going away. It's either going to help you or it's going to hurt you. It's your decision and your actions that determines which. And man, reputation management, it's all over. And there's more coming. It's not just the review sites. It's what people post on Facebook and Google+. It's the reviews that they give you for your service coupons on Groupon. It's the comments they put on your YouTube videos. There's the reviews that you own, such as Business Raider, Press the Review, and then reviews that you kind of rent at Dealer Raider if you get certified. And then there's Yelp. Do you know why Yelp has been so successful? Anybody here, can, can anybody tell me why Yelp has been so successful? Yeah, AJ? Because it's about the consumer and not about us. Yes, it's also been successful because of the bad reviews. I have a good, I have full disclosure, Dan Wick, one of the owners of Business Raider, good friend of mine. I like Dan. A little goofy, but I like him. Anyway, I told him last night we were at a party. I said, Dan, I'm so sick of seeing five-star reviews. If you don't start getting some trashy reviews, <laughs> your, your site is going down, okay? Don't be afraid of negative reviews. Negative reviews are your friend. Number one, what shows up in the top of the search results? Anybody figured this out yet? You want to get a review to the top of the search results? What does it have to be? Negative. Negative review. Why do negative reviews go to the top of the search results? Because people click on them. Thank you very much. That's exactly right, because people click on them. And Google wants to protect the user experience. This is an ecosystem, people. Get with it. So you've got to have negative reviews to justify your good reviews. When I look at a dealership of 1,500 reviews and they're all five-star, what do you think? Thank you, AJ. That's what I think. You know what I think? Mm, bullshit. <laughs> You have to have negative reviews. If you don't have some twos, some threes, some fours, some ones, you know what the difference is when you get a negative review? What do you do when a customer walks in and starts screaming that they're unhappy in your showroom? Thank you very much. Try to make them happy. Oh, that's what you do on the internet. It's the same process, people. Get on there and apologize. I'm sorry we suck so bad. Let me fix it for you. Let me make it right. Here's my personal cell phone number. Here's my direct email. I want to get you in the dealership. Let's replace the car. Let's detail the car. Let's get the greasy fingerprints off the headliner. Let's do what we got to do to make it right. Because if they show up at the dealership, what are you going to do? Same thing. So get the negative reviews. Embrace negative reviews. Carl Sewell, Sewell Lexus. I'm privileged to count Mr. Sewell as a friend. When I first started doing this a few years ago, my whole focus was five-star reviews. Give me more five-star reviews. Carl just about slapped me silly. Told me, he goes, what good is a review, a reputation management program that only generates positive reviews? I need to know who's pissed off at us. If you don't generate some negative reviews, your program is worthless to me. I need to know who's upset with my dealership so I can fix it. The happy customers, most of them are happy. I know about the happy customers. Your reputation management program should be designed to flush out unhappy customers so you can fix it and make it right. And when the rest of the world sees you do that, they will beat a path to your showroom door. That's reality. 1,500 five-star reviews is bullshit. I'm sorry. Nobody believes it. I don't. The customers don't. The only people that drink that Kool-Aid is the dealer principal. Okay. Why are reviews so important? Check out these numbers. And these are from February of, 20, of 2012. What do customers have a degree of trust in the following forms of advertising? Look at this. Recommendation for people they know. Do you know that if you get a positive mention from one of your customers on Facebook, you can turn that into an ad called a, it's called a sponsored story. Anybody here hear about sponsored stories? If you're not doing sponsored stories, do it. Just do it. It's the best thing going today. Customer opinions posted online. Brand websites, the factory website. Articles. 
sponsorships, TV, newspaper, magazines, that gives you sort of a rundown of credibility. Next slide. What is the preferred source for product and service information? Consumer ratings, consumer reviews, your own dealership website. Embrace this. This is where we're at. This is today. This is not tomorrow. This is right now. <coughs> the number one thing all of you should be doing when you get back to your dealership is coming up with a plan to get more reviews. Go to your service department is a treasure trove. How many ROs do you generate compared to how many cars you sell? The service department is review treasure. Triangle of success. Um, I want to show you a couple of examples of dealers that get it. Um, this is, and by the way, they're not a client, not anymore. Herb Chambers. You have, we call this, you have a voice. You go to HerbChambersReviews.com, you pick out your dealership. This is uh, the Feldman stores up in uh, Minneapolis. You pick out your dealership. It tells you what to pick your choice. Look, I've tried this where you try to manipulate where the customer does reviews. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. People blow out. The minute you try to manipulate them, they say pass, and they leave. Give them their choice. The Yelpers will pick Yelp. The guy that used Edmonds to find out the true market value will pick Google Edmonds. The people that use Google Gmail will pick Google. Some people will pick Dealer Raider. Let them self-select. Now, if they're physically in your dealership, you should have one of those review sites that you own so that you can have reviews done in the dealership without violating any of the terms and conditions of the review site. Rob? Yes, sir. Quick tip, folks. When you put your hyperlink on the Google Places, use the mobile URL. They don't have to sign in. Very nice. Thank you for that tip. Use the mobile. That's very important. Lufuse Reviews, you want to see an example of that? Here's Lufuse Buick. Here's a Google review. Here's a Yelp review. Yelp reviews. I love that. Now, when you go to your Google, when you go to your Yelp page, if you haven't filled in all the information, what are you doing? Next time, instead of going to Starbucks, take 20 minutes and fill out the information about your dealership. Horrible experience. Look what they look what this dealership, this dealer responded. No service department is perfect, mistakes happen. It's how you handle yourself and the customer. You, you have to get back to these customers. In that particular case, by the way, they went on to take ownership of the problem and satisfy the customer. Um, retargeting. I want to show examples. So here I was looking at reviews on Judy's book. And why do you think I was being served an ad for the Digital Dealer Conference? Because I'd been to digitaldealerconference.com. It was retargeting. Live example of retargeting. I also book Hertz online. Everywhere I go, I see ads for Hertz. <laughs> My response is, I already rent from you guys. Why do you keep showing me ads? <laughs> I say that to a Hertz executive. He goes, because we like you. <laughs> it doesn't actually bother me, because I'm a customer of theirs. So when I see their ads, it's kind of like a warm and fuzzy. Uh, another review site, another that's business rater, another review site. So I want to close. This is my last section, because I realize we're running out of time. Can we actually, we, can we do the, use the internet to generate revenue? Revenue realization. We're gonna see, I'm gonna close with a suggestion. First of all, I'm talking to a buddy of mine who owns this McJack's Corvettes out in uh, Newport Beach. He's a character. Great guy, though. And he's showing me this on his Facebook profile. He says, I gotta grab this. Here's a customer who lives in Hawaii, buys this old Corvette on the web, has it shipped to him, has a complete uh, like re restoration with a color change done, spends God knows how much money on this whole thing, and he's never actually touched the car. If, uh, people, if you don't think you can start collecting money off the web, you're about 30 years behind the times. eBay Motors. You know what, we all, anybody here from Auto Trader? Any Auto Traders people? I know bureaucars.com. I love cars.com, by the way. I really do. Great company. But look at eBay Motors. I'm sorry, they crush everybody else. And they sell thousands and thousands of cars. I'm not saying you should be selling cars on eBay Motors. I'm saying that if you don't think you can sell cars online, I used to work for ADP, Lithia. We sold 
between 40 and 80 cars a month completely transaction online until Lithia pulled the plug. You can sell cars online. Start thinking about how. So what are you doing today and tomorrow? Here's my summary. Today, anybody here in charge of digital marketing at your dealership? My hat is off to you. Because your job it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And for those of you who are dealers, I want you to consider this. To do this correct, you need at least these components. But remember what I was talking about with the tips funnel? All of these components still correlate to driving traffic, engaging with customers, turning things into money, the process that gets them to turn into money. So what does that look like? Well, I found this. I'm looking at it going, OK. I can see showing this to a dealer. XML, APIs, Ajax, Ruby on Rails, rat mashups, remixing, aggregation, embedding, ranking, profile correlation, folks, I don't even know what that is, tag clouds, virtual worlds, RSS, I know what that is, applications, widgets, webs, links, clicks, tag and rating, social connections, text, images, videos, interactive media, and virtual architecture. Whatever you're getting paid, people, it ain't enough. <laughs> okay, because this, this has gotten out of control. This has gotten out of control. So what am I going to propose? And this is, my, this is my close, sort of my close. Okay, so going back to the traffic engagement process and revenue realization. Going back to that model, you know what I'm going to tell you it takes? Folks, this is less about technology and more about what? People, people. I'm, I, I want to meet the first dealer, because it's going to happen. It might be somebody in this room. I'm looking for a dealer who says to me, Ralph, I'm willing to hire four people to be the four horses of the apocalypse for digital marketing. And one person is going to be responsible for traffic. One person is going to be responsible for engagement. One person is going to be responsible for process. And another person is going to be responsible for making sure that everything these other three does turns into money. And I'm going to go camp out at that dealership for a few months. And then we're going to show the rest of the world how it's done. So this is my challenge to the industry today. Where's the first dealer? You can't tell me these aren't important. Where's the first dealer willing to put the bet on the mat, on the table, and invest in four people to work with their collection of suppliers and technologies to make all this work, each one of them held accountable, whose pay plans reflect performance based on how well they do in these four areas? Because I've actually done this. I did this at Courtesy Chevrolet. I'm not bragging, just fact. We sold 11,000 vehicles retail in 2006. And I had four people working for me doing this. When I left the dealership, what do you think they did with those four people? Gone. What happened to their sales? Gone. So I'm here to tell you, somebody out there is going to get this. Somebody out there is going to make the investment, and they're going to crush it. They're going to crush it. Process, that's a BDC manager right there, isn't it? Traffic is a marketing director. Engagement is a webmaster. And what is this? This is like a sales manager. So I wanted to also show this. I think this is great. I got this in an email from Adobe. And I love this. Dear Ralph, you can't improve your digital marketing game if you don't know the score. The only way to overcome your competition and increase the ROI of your marketing is to view all your campaign data holistically. That's the other challenge. So last thing I want to do is I um, want to invite all of you to join AutomotiveDigitalMarketing.com, ADMPC.com. I've got like 50 URLs hooked up to it, so there's a bunch of them that work. Um, a little slideshare.net slash Ralph Paglia. This presentation is on it. Um, if you go to AutomotiveDigitalDealers.com, I've got the presentation file exchange and a whole bunch of uh, email templates, phone scripts, reporting spreadsheets, all there for the taking. This is the last slide, and this is the one that shows you these links that I've set up for everybody that came to my session. So take a picture, or just download the PowerPoint from SlideShare. These are live links. You can click on them, and there's a treasure trove available to you. And I want to wish you all the best of success 
in 2012. Thank you very much. Talk with the guys at Jack Cooper. I got the, I got the memo. Oh, you did? Yeah. On Jack Cooper? I'm sure. Yeah. What about Jack Cooper? Yeah. I saw talking to the guys at Jack Cooper, down, and I told him, I go, hey, you're yeah. a comment? Hey, this is still taking six or this is, I seriously, my, my own team thought it because I go, they need to get him back. Yeah. These guys go, no, nah, he's gone. And, and I said, so I can't believe we let him go. I mean, this is like one of the smartest guys in the business. So I was putting up a plug. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I was putting up a plug. I have so much respect for you. The best question so far. Thank you very much. It means a lot. It means a lot to me. It's so flattering to have you. Been with Habakkuk B Z. Well, you know what? Robert, how can I say anything better than they said? I'll read you every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I'm so glad. Get out to BBC. I love that. You got any extras? I love that, Captain BBC. That is awesome. Do it. Please do that. I'm a big believer in BBC. Stadium, thanks so much. Yes. Very nice. Oh yeah, yeah. That's part of the future. Yeah, I had to make sure I include that. Thank you. Yes. I can send that to somebody. Thank you very much. You know, I used to recommend UBL.org. Now there's a new service through a company called Noam, K-N-O-W, like no, and then E-M, Noam.com. And uh, I don't know if they released it yet. I've been testing their data, and it rocks. My own employees told me the Noam system is so much more accurate and works better than UBL. But UBL.org is a good one, but I think Noam is going to be better. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, you made my day. Thank you very much. Hi. Yes. Yes. Been a great time. Yes. 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 It was a mistake on their part. Um, we've been able to get it fixed for several um, of our clients, but it hasn't been easy. Yeah. I've had to do all kinds of like unsavory yeah. stuff to get them to okay, fix right. it. Because they're overwhelmed right now. They've got millions of businesses that are coming, oh, yeah. so they can't I possibly. so many complaints and tried reaching person and reaching person and reaching person. You know what? Do yourself a favor. Send an email to Mario Morgado Jr. at Brickle Honda down in Miami. And he's gotten it fixed, and he's he, he's. He's got the process down better than anybody else I've seen in America. So it's called Brickle. Yep, write it down. Brickle, uh, Honda, Brickle, Buick GMC. They have two stores. He's the owner's son. His name's Mario. His last name's Morgado. M-U-R-G-A-D-L. You know, the worst thing in the world is to give out advertising on a, in a, with a free pen and then the pen yeah, doesn't let me work. Do this. <laughs> there I you go. In my notes. Yeah, get it. And just tell Mario that you know you uh, that I referred him, referred you to him. Um, and uh, it's Mario Jr. You don't want to run into Mario Sr. Like okay. I said, he's a spirit. Mario, what's his last name? Morgado. 